You're listening to a TaxCast Extra from the Tax Justice Network. I'm Naomi Fowler. Today we're talking about the Bogota Declaration on Tax Justice for Women's Rights. I'm talking to Liz Nelson, the Director of the Tax Justice Network's Human Rights Programme. The Bogota Declaration is a result of a meeting in Colombia in 2017. Um, what was the idea behind this meeting, behind bringing together tax justice movements and women's rights movements? The Bogota meeting was a, a global convening of leading organisations. The, the planning of it was very much a collaboration between uh, the Friedrich Ebert Foundation, the Global Alliance for Tax Justice, Public Services International Confederation of Unions and Tax Justice Network. And the idea was to bring leading organisations and thinkers from both the tax justice movement and the women's rights movement together. And it, and it was to try and do several things. It was a, a meeting about taking stock, understanding the political, structural context in which we are working to achieve rights for women. Uh, it was an opportunity for researchers, advocates, policy, uh, public service, trade unionists, activists, people from faith organisations and others to come together to recognise our shared values and, and our shared goals and to take some leadership about what we wanted to achieve, you know, in the next 12 months, the next five years, or the, in, indeed the next 10 years. And we're very conscious as well that we are in a time when we have the Sustainable Development Goals. There are very, some very strong statements in the Sustainable Development Goals about the rights for women, about gender equality. There are a number of things that, that we can do, both as tax justice and women's rights movements, and could do together, and that's the important thing, that we together can be stronger. We can use each other's narrative and our expertise and understanding to strengthen our position and have a greater impact, I think, in achieving rights for women. So it was very much about establishing a common understanding. What do we want to achieve in terms of the rights for women and why and what can be the positive impact? As you say, governments have signed up to all kinds of agreements. There is the United Nations Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals and uh, the Addis Ababa Agenda for Action. Article 2.1 of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights they're supposed to be raising resources for gender equality and for the empowerment of women and girls. So there is a commitment there, um, but at the same time we're seeing more corporations now than national states among the top 100 entities with the highest annual revenues. Uh, we're looking at a time now of huge corporate gains, yet inequality levels are rising. How do you put that context into what's happening now with uh, women and tax? Right. Well, we know that, that tax is one of the most important instruments that allows governments to, to raise revenue to provide public services, social protection for their citizens and ensure they meet their, their human rights obligations to women and girls. And we, we know that women make up half of the world's poor. We also know that women in many countries, socially and economically, are predominantly carers um, provide that society the social role. Uh, so they're caring for children, for elderly parents, extended family, for family members who have special needs. And it, it's because this, this context is really important it's because of this role and how women are both treated and perceived culturally that it's so important that we think about tax and how it can address some of the issues for women and the, the in some cases, denials of women's rights and that states have obligations towards women and to provide this social protection and to provide fundamental things like health care, social care, education, clean water, sanitation, decent housing, transport infrastructure, so that women can go to work, hopefully safely, girls can go to school, hopefully safely, 
so tax is important for all those reasons, and tax has a an ability to respond to those issues. I mean, the issues I've just mentioned about social care and education, they apply to everyone. But because of the context and the way that women are positioned, if you like, and structured in society, the issues that I was talking about being carers and so on, it's really important that we look at tax in a different way. Okay, and in the context of falling tax revenues, which we're seeing across the world, there's cuts to public services and a a heavier tax burden on ordinary people. And I'm just thinking of, in particular, consumption taxes, goods and services taxes, or VAT, as we would say in the UK, shifting more and more of the burden onto ordinary people rather than on bigger earners and uh, large companies. And that puts a bigger burden on women. It does, yes, it does. Tax can have a positive impact on the lives of women in terms of the way tax is structured, how it's codified, both at a domestic level and an international level. Uh, While this is an issue for women globally, north and south, we do have to recognise that there are particular issues in low-income countries where many low-income countries have a much stronger reliance on consumption taxes, such as VAT, as we call them in the UK, to to get revenue, to provide those public goods and services. So women who are in a role of, for instance, of a carer, tend to use goods and services which attract VAT, and this makes a, a much bigger dint in their income and has the potential to, you know, keep them in poverty. And I think it's also important to mention that corporation tax and other direct taxes have a really important role to play. They have a, they're like a central pillar for government revenue and act as a backstop for, for social protections for women and other citizens. So it's really important that governments set rates of corporation tax, that corporations are well regulated, that low tax rates in jurisdictions or zero tax rates in some jurisdictions are not used as a a short-term carrot to attract multinational corporations, for instance, to low-income countries. The tax rate is so low, they bring very little tax in, or their regulation or the contracts that they've signed are so weak that corporations have a lot of scope for profit shifting and various other forms of of tax avoidance. The Bogota Declaration is quite a long document that came out of that meeting in Colombia. Give us an idea what's in this document. So first of all, the, the Bogota Declaration sets out the context in which women are living their lives within fairly globally regressive tax systems and unpick some of the key issues around that, which is some of which we've discussed about how there's an overemphasis on consumption tax. There's too little attention paid to the importance of corporation tax. There's too little attention paid to the fact that women are often taxed as a couple. There is too little attention paid to the fact that the data we have around the impact of taxation on women has not been explored enough. So the first part is about setting the context and and if you like a a rallying call to organisations and individuals who are interested in working on those issues. And it's saying that, you know, come together, let's work together on these issues of women's rights and tax justice and understand how they can work together. As well as providing that context, it gives some very concrete examples about how a government could change its fiscal policy to provide greater access to public services. And obviously that's very topical now where many countries Uh, have adopted austerity policies. It also talks through very specific tax proposals which can tax uh, alternatively for sex equality instead of sex inequality. It is detailed. There are some very specific 
recommendations or demands. Uh, but it does give, uh, I think, a really important route map for ourselves as researchers and advocates and activists to think about, you know, w what can we demand and what can we say to our politicians? How can we explain to the, the media what we need to do to create better lives for women, greater opportunity for women, greater equality through a more just and progressive tax system? So what are the next steps now that you see for tax justice and women's rights? Um, what kind of things are you going to be demanding now? Well, we're looking for a new approach, a shift in the narrative and a shift in the systems of how tax is structured. We need to see that women are taxed as individuals, for instance, and not as one part of a couple. Uh, whoever that couple may be. We need to have fiscal policies which provide social protection for women and for girls. We need to, and the Bogota Declaration talks about this, to address the hemorrhaging from many countries of tax revenue from profit shifting, uh, from the lack of fiscal transparency, the use of uh, financial secrecy jurisdictions. And there are a number of things that the Tax Justice Network particularly want to do around their, what we call their, the ABC of financial transparency. But there are also things that the tax justice movement wants to do with uh, the women's rights movement to work together to understand each other's um, issues. I mean, I think one of the things that came out from the Bogota meeting was that sometimes the tax justice movement and the women's rights movement might be working in different spheres. And actually, a lot of the work we're doing together and a lot of what we're trying, the goals we have are exactly the same. And there is a lot we can do to work together, both to strengthen our arguments and push forward to for greater equality for women. One of our goals is, and I think this is really important, is to engage with politicians, to use opportunities to talk with politicians and get our message out so that not only do they understand the issues, the impact that a different approach to tax systems, a more progressive approach, the impact that will have on women's lives, but also on the economic real position of a particular country, the real impact it will have on the education for children, therefore for the future for a workforce, uh, and so on. And also, I think politicians and states uh, as representatives of governments need to understand that they, as countries, we have ob we've signed up to the Declaration for Human Rights many countries signed up to the CEDAW Convention, which is the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. And these are obligations that we should hold politicians to account for. You've been listening to a TaxCast Extra with Liz Nelson of the Tax Justice Network's Tax Justice and Human Rights Programme. For more information on tax and women, go to www.taxjustice.net. Thanks for listening. Thank you.